Hey guys, we're back. It's Saturday night and we are here week 12 of the Power Rankings. We're just motoring along. Only a couple weeks left and we are going to start as we always do in the East. But things are a little different this time. We have a new bottom feeder and it is the New Jersey Devils. Uh, they are currently on a five game losing streak and that's going to that's gonna put them down at the bottom. Uh, they're not quite uh, below Boston, Buffalo in points yet. They still have a five point cushion with the game in hand but if they don't pick things up, they're going to soon find themselves below uh, Buffalo in the standings as well. Number seven, we do have the Buffalo Sabres, the first team officially uh, eliminated from the playoffs. So, unfortunately, no playoffs for Buffalo. They are playing way better, though, without Taylor Hall. Uh, I don't know if that's a coincidence, because, of course, Taylor Hall is playing quite well in Boston. He's got already more goals, or the equal goals, that he had all season in Buffalo. So, uh, But they did go 2-2 two two this week, which is, for them, the best week I think they've had all season. Ah, oh, number six, we do have the Flyers. Oh, man, again, they've lost three of four. They seemed like a really solid team at the beginning of the year, and I had high hopes of them going far, but if they continue this, they might be, uh, find themselves on the outside looking in, and uh, right now, the way the Rangers are playing, uh, they're going to have to pull something off to catch up to them. I just don't see it happening. <laughs> number five is Boston, uh, and they started the week with a big 8-1 to one defeat at the hands of the Washington Capitals. Uh, but since then, they've been they've been doing very well. They've got a three-game winning streak going. And again, as I said, since uh, Taylor Hall's come there, they have not lost. And he's got two goals in three games. So just, uh, I think this is what he needed. I think he's always, everywhere he's played, has been the franchise player. Uh, he missed out being the franchise player with Big David by like a year um, when he came to town. Uh, but uh, there's been a lot of pressure on him. And this might really work as he is... He is not Pasternak or Machamp or, or Bergeron. He's not going to be expected uh, to get those kind of points. So he might fit in there really nicely on the second line, not having to play against first line uh, opponents. Number four, we do have the same team that is also uh, won three games in a row, and that is the New York Rangers. So they stayed ahead of the Boston Bruins this week. Um, they're just playing some really good hockey. I, you know, a while ago they were they were out of this, and now they are they're right in it. They are in the midst of it. And they, I would love to see them make the playoffs. And I think they could be a very scary team in the playoffs and they may, if they make it. Uh, Artemi Panarin is doing really good. He leads the team with 46 points. Then at number three, we do have the Islanders. And they dropped from first to third this week. But uh, uh, it was just losing three or four. Uh, they lost one to the Rangers and then they lost to Boston. So that's, that's going to cost you your number one spot. Um, they do have a tough week ahead of two. They have a couple easier games, but then they have three games against Washington. So... That is going to be a make or break for them. They need to win at least a couple of those games against Washington. Uh, number two is the Penguins. Uh, they, they're they continuing again. Like we talked about this last week that uh, you don't want to count the uh, Penguins out and that they tend to play good at the right time. And this is the right time of year and they are really playing well. Uh, just uh, they, they're playing awesome and they have a real chance to put some real distance between them and some other teams uh, because they do play three games against New Jersey in a row. So... Uh, it could pad their stats a little. That is going to bring us, of course, to the number one team, the Washington Capitals. And they're back up to top again. Uh, they're just playing some really good hockey. And um, they have a couple games. They only lost one game in the last week, and that was to the Sabres, which is a little concerning. Uh, but uh, since, the, again, the trade deadline, they've added Manta. And wow, he seems to really fit in there well. And uh, it was already a dangerous team, and it looks a little more dangerous now and even more. Uh, so we're going to see you guys in the Central. All right, here we are in the Central, and we are going to go again with the Columbus Blue Jackets in number eight. Second week in a row for them, and uh, things are not improving. Uh, they have lost seven of their last eight, and uh, yeah, they're currently on a five-game losing streak, so things are really, really not looking good in Columbus. I can't see Tortorella keeping his job after this, even though it does sound like he is saying the same things that management is saying. I just can't see how the fan base can accept this. Uh, number seven is going to be Detroit. Hey, they're having a... A bit of a bit of bounce back season, I think. Oh, again, we've said this; it's way too little, too late. But uh, I had a setback against uh, um, the Blackhawks, of course, tonight. But other than that, they they had a good week. They rattled off three wins, and and they, uh, they they're looking to play the role of spoilers as we come down the end of the uh, end of the season. So we'll see who they can beat. They have already beaten some big teams this week, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Number six, Dallas. Uh, they they they're starting to play better again. It seemed they started late because of COVID. Then they started really strong. Uh, then they had the, the other setback uh, due to the power outage, and they lost another couple games. And it just seems that they couldn't get things going. But the, I think slowly but surely things are, are starting to look a little better now. Uh, uh, we'll see. 
it, they, they've won four of their last six and uh, uh, they, they have beat Columbus twice so uh, I mean that is a good thing and that is why they're ahead of them. Uh, number five is the Nashville Predators. Uh, you don't know which team you're going to get with this one. They, I mean, we didn't have a horrible week. They lost to Carolina twice, which, uh, it sucks, but it's, it's not, that's understandable. Uh, they also spanked, uh, Tampa 7-2, uh, so not sure which team shows up, uh, and they're, they're running out of runway, as it were, so they're really going to have to put some moves on if they're going to keep their position and maybe move up a little bit. And then two points behind them and uh, just one game in hand, we have the number four, the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, they also won three or four this week, and uh, they've had a season, they have a season deciding series coming up. Uh, so it's uh, three games in a row against Nashville. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, that is huge because they're both so close, and we'll see who can really uh, pull away. Uh, if one team can win all three of those, uh, that's really going to push, push them up. Uh, number three, we have Tampa. They have swapped uh, back up to first and then back to third, and, and this is definitely a, a, another one of a down week. We talked about that 7-2 to two loss to Nashville, but uh, that wasn't very good. Uh, then they split with Florida, so you, uh, when the other teams are just doing better, they're going to play, uh, they're going to go up in the power rankings more. Uh, not dire situation. I think Florida's fine, or, uh, sorry, Tampa's fine, uh, and I'm not... Number two, we do have the Florida Panthers. They won three of their last four, and uh, the one they did lose was in overtime to Florida, so they got that point as well. So, I mean, they got a possible four, five out of six points this week. So, uh, all in all, a very good week for the Panthers, and they stay in the number two position. Uh, number one is going to be back to the Carolina Hurricanes, though. So, uh, they they went four of six in, in their last games, uh, and they did have uh, a couple losses to Detroit, uh, but one of them they did also manage to make it to overtime as well. Uh, but again, I, I'm going to put that down to Detroit playing well more than Carolina not playing well. Uh, so I just, I think this is the best I've ever seen Carolina play in the regular season. I don't remember them ever fighting for the President's Trophy uh, to my memory. If they have, that's awesome. Uh, but it's great to see and uh, you always like to see someone new challenge. We'll see you in the West. All right, here we are now in the West, and of course, number eight, we do have again the San Jose Sharks. Uh, they are again a five-game losing streak. Uh, any momentum they were gaining there is totally gone again, and this really isn't the best way to be celebrating Patrick Marlowe uh, tying tonight Gordie Howe's record for most games, and obviously he's going to go ahead and pass it tomorrow. I can't believe he's now played more games than I believe it was six NHL franchises have played games. And I believe he's played uh, played a single game with 37% of all players to ever play in the NHL. Wow, talk about some records. But as I said, not in good uh, spirits right now, I'm sure, losing all these games. Number seven, we do have the Anaheim Mighty Ducks, and they move up to seventh because they were able to steal three wins from those San Jose Sharks. Uh, we'll see. They have a couple more games against them, so they can move up standings a lot. These are all moral victories at this point, though nothing too, uh, nothing too crazy. Number six, uh, the Los Angeles Kings, and uh, they also don't seem to want this. Uh, this seems the bottom teams in this division are kind of giving out, and the top ones are running away with it. Uh, it was close for a while. This was one of the divisions that was a little closer, but uh, it's spreading out now. Uh, number five, we do have the Arizona Coyotes. And they, they have only won one of their last five, and they're uh, starting to drop. They're only one point on St. Louis, uh, up on St. Louis, for that final uh, playoff position in the West. Uh, number four is St. Louis, as we mentioned. Uh, uh, they're only the one point back there. Or, sorry, they're, yeah, they're one point back of Arizona, and in a position to make a move. And they only played two games this week. They lost them both, but uh, one was a good spirited affair with, with their uh, the abs, so you can't punish them uh, too much for that. And then in number three, we do have the Minnesota Wild, and they're riding a three-game winning streak again. And if they uh, if they win these next games against Arizona, it, they could really lock themselves up into third in, in the division. They do have two games coming up against Arizona, so uh, it could be very important to both those teams' futures. Uh, number two, Colorado. Oh, again, eh? I hate to drop them. I had to drop them out at first just because of how the other team's doing, but uh, they're still going on their four-game winning streak, but unfortunately they have been hit, and they are now out at least the next three games with COVID. Uh, I really hope that they're not going to experience the same sort of thing as Vancouver. Uh, if 
if there's an extended break like that, I don't know how the playoffs are going to happen. Let's all just keep our fingers crossed <laughs> that uh, this is the end of the breakouts and that, and that people can keep this together here. Uh, number one is Vegas, the Golden Knights. As I said, they do have a five-game winning streak, uh, a plus 46 goal differential. Uh, they're just riding high, and they have the next six games against either San Jose or Anaheim, so they really have a, a chance to put some serious points on the board. All right, we'll see you finally in the north. And lastly, we are in the north, and unfortunately, number seven remains the same, Vancouver. <sighs> Third week in a row, they still have not played any games. This is a pretty scary situation for all those players involved. I really hope that, uh, uh, I mean, they're supposed to start playing, I believe, tomorrow or Monday. So let's hope that things can finally start rolling for Vancouver. They're going to have a really compressed schedule. Uh, it's it's going to be tough for them. And I uh, hope, oh, as I said, with uh, I hope Colorado it doesn't have a similar, have a similar fate. Uh, number six, we do have the Ottawa Senators, and they're loving playing spoilers here. They keep throwing jabs in here and there. Uh, they seem to be a thorn in everyone's side besides the Oilers, uh, who swept them, but everyone else, they seem to just, you know, give them an, enough trouble there to win a couple of games here and there. Uh, number five, the Flames, they uh, they almost jumped up to the, the fourth if they could have won that other game against Montreal, but they did lose their three-game winning streak there. They are definitely like, look like they're playing a, a lot better, but this is typical near the end of the season. They'll, they'll get your hopes up for next season. <laughs> uh, it's still possible that they, both them and Vancouver make it, but it's looking slim now. Uh, number four is Montreal. They won two and lost two this week, uh, but they really need to they really need to batten down the hatches to, to maintain their position. Uh, losing these uh, these games are starting to add up, and as I did say, Vancouver and Calgary are both still slightly able to do it. Uh, I mean, it's very uh, unlikely, but they, they need to win it to, to solidify their place. And in uh, number three, we do have the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, they lost three, and the one before that, they were barely able to edge out Ottawa, as I said. Sometimes they're tricky, but uh, it's not the way you want to play when you're coming up to the playoffs like this. Uh, it sounds like Willie Nylander will be back, uh, so that was a quick, uh, quicker COVID uh, uh, turnaround there, so it sounds like everything went well there. Uh, he's already practicing with the team, but uh, yeah, so things should go good there. Uh, number two is the Oilers. They only played one game this week, but it was a very good game. They played a solid, solid game against Winnipeg tonight, winning 3 to nothing, only allowing 25 shots, and Mike Smith was e easily equal to the task to get his third shot of the year. I think this is the best uh, goaltender the Oilers have had in quite a few years, and I think the Oilers are ready to make a good playoff push. We'll see how that goes. Number one, I did give it to the Jets. They did have that loss to the Oilers tonight, but other than that, they had a good week. They uh, A big win in Toronto, 5-2, to two, that helped them uh, catch up to the Leafs a bit there, and they split with those pesky Sens, who, as I said, everyone besides Edmonton seems to have losses to them, so I'm not going to punish them for that too much. Let me know uh, what you think of the list, and if you did like the video, please give it a like, subscribe, share it around. Everything you do helps. Thanks again, and you guys have a great evening.